Hello everybody and welcome back to my let's play of Aurora 4X. So, um, we left off yesterday um, just puttering around a little bit, um, but today I want to talk about something very interesting that um, I found out the other day. So, remember how I said that you can't rebuild capture designs for... Uh, and then disassemble them for research points, right? Because the ships don't appear, um, captured ship designs don't appear in the um, retool, right? You can't tool shipyards for it. Well, although that is correct, you can use captured components in your own ship designs. Right here. Whoops. So, if you have a look, there's a little checkbox here. Own tech only. Alright. So, if you untick that, suddenly, all of these components that you've captured, the 275 Mag Fusion Drive, the 80 EP Mag Plasma uh, from much, much earlier, uh, the 1000 ton Jump Drive, Fire Control, Missile Launch Control, uh... The size 1 missile launcher, the size 4, size 6, the magazine. All these things with a D in front of them, um, those are captured components. Right? So they are components that you did not research yourself, uh, and they have been stolen or reverse engineered. Right? However, if you have a look, right, it appears that there might be some kind of cost increase all right if you have a look at the ecms uh, and, we'll, and we'll confirm that once we get our own eccm and ecm5 uh, but if you have a look ecm that it, it goes up by 10 and then there's a jump of two levels but it jumps by uh 45 all right so the cost so there's a dramatic cost increase there so we'll see for sure once we actually um get our own level of ecm up to five but uh it does appear that the, com the capture components are a little bit more extractive and if we have a look there's a swarm extraction module all right so base terraform rate base mining rate it looks like it might be a mining module yeah, interesting yeah, no, it's an asteroid miner. Oh, that's that's actually pretty good. If you have a look, have a look. Asteroid mining module. 10, 120, 5,000. So it's the same size, same cost, and same asteroid rating. But it only requires one crew. So that means we can save a fair amount on um, crew requirements, which means less... Um, which means less crew quarters. So this would potentially be um, a much more effective mi mining module um, than our current tech. And interestingly enough, unless this thing is meant to be a lot cheaper, um, yeah, same amount. Um, unless unless this thing is meant to be a lot cheaper than the other one, uh, this one doesn't appear to have any kind of cost increase. Um, so it could be possible that the ECM-5 just happens to be um, on a, uh, costed on a curve rather than on a linear scale. Like I said, we'll find out for sure once we get to the uh, get our own ECM. But, yeah, so this is one way that you can... Um, basically turn minerals into research points. So we can build a ship, right, and just do that. There we go. Um, hang on. Um, that one, maybe not this one because it's too big. But there we go, All right? You build one of these. You disassemble it, and you have now have 140 ECCM fives that you can disassemble. That you can um, disassemble for um, for um, for research into ECM or, or ECCM, as the case may be. So there is definitely um, 
I wouldn't say exploit. Well, yeah, a little bit exploitative. But there's definitely a little bit of an exploitative edge there. Now, I'm not going to do this because it would mean retooling my shipyards and it's just mm, a bit of a hassle. Um, so we will instead uh, continue on as we are and we're going to play it a little bit more legit. There you go. All right. Um, so where were we? Right. We were waiting for something interesting to happen or something more interesting to happen. Um, and probably for civilians to go r rush to Cairns A, which means it's probably going to take people off. Uh, Cairns A is about two stops, so we'll see. Uh, <clears throat> Mark Aronson. Oh, Aronson, here we go. Um, we're still doing a geo survey in Bunbury, and Bunbury is... go. Where's Bunbury? It's out there, which means one, two, three. That's a pretty hefty run. We'll wait until it's at about 10% fuel and then bring them home. Okay. <laughs> now, it would be nice if we had the... Um, Ordnance oh, factory. That's useful. Um, it would be nice if we had a mag, mag fusion power plant that we could uh, cheap and. Hang on. I think I do remember disassembling a power plant. Ah, it's only magnetic confinement. Yeah. So, not good enough tech. Alright. Uh, we will continue on. So, it does look like each construction brigade does also um, run its own roles. Uh, because it's specific construction brigades that are digging up these things and not um, uh, construction brigades on planet X have done this and that, you know. Um, but yeah, uh, what shall we do next? Um, let's go with. Fire control speed rating 62. I like that one. We'll bang that out. Okay. But we do now have a, uh, the next level of, of range, so we can start uh, redeveloping our beam ships as soon as our far ultraviolets are done. <clears throat> Although the uh, fire control is two months away, so by the time the laser gets done, we can potentially get the faster fire tracking speed as well. So that's going to be interesting timing. Okay. Nothing new there. We're going to be getting our shield tech soon, I think. Uh, four abandoned maintenance facilities. Not bad.
Um, oh, we got two more. Two automated, two more automated mines on cans. Um. Okay, sure. We got a few minerals from disassembling those components, but now we're act actively digging titanium, boronite, and sorium at four per year. So, yeah. Blue. Oh well. We'll keep going. Because we've got nothing else to do at the moment. Yeah, what are we close to? Shield regenerate and more better magazine injection. <clears throat> mm hmm. Five hundred miles on Sydney Prime. Um I'll put a supply of two auto mines and um, hmm. no, we'll cancel that. Hmm. There's one on Sydney. Um, Duranium and Sorium with good amounts. Um, yeah, why am I I'm not buying that? There we go. Okay. So we got Shield Regen and Magazine Injection both due this year. And then we got a gap of an entire year before we get the new Speed Rating, Mag Fusion, and Far Ultraviolet Laser. So what I might do, once the Shield and the Magazine are done... Ooh, our Mine Layer is done. Okay, you know what? Let, let's, go fun, let's go have fun with that first. So, TG, we have Salamander. Split that off. All right, so, so he's pulling eight grand. Um, he's got f half of the ammo storage, and that's fine. We only built 50 of them anyway. Um, so, what are we doing? First and foremost... <clears throat> Salamander, we need to load up our ammunition. Here we go. There we are. So that second launcher is just in case, really. <clears throat> Here we go. And we're going to launch missile at each of our internal jump points. And then standard transit. <clears throat> launch, launch, 
launch launch right we haven't actually gone out through cans yet have we um, launch 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 and uh, and then give us an alert and see how you go Okay, so if we go to Sol now, what we'll see is that he will head out, so he'll go to Canberra, <clears throat> and watch the active sensor rings, alright. So he'll head out to the Canberra jump point. There it goes. Oh, he's already done it. Wow, he's fast. Alright, so he's run over to Canberra. He's launched a missile, which is a boy there. Uh, because it doesn't have an engine or fuel, its expiry time is going to permanently remain one. At least it should. <clears throat> and it'll be pretty much just stay there indefinitely. There you go. So it's going to remain there as long as we keep it there and that way it'll act as a sensor and watch for anyone or anything coming through that jump point. So that, there you go. Oh, and see this line here? This line is what happens when a contact appears at the location where it's at. It, um, so it, it appears there without having a previous location and without traversing in from outside any sensor control, a sensor range. All right. So it doesn't know where the origin was. So it just draws it from a random point or from a specific point. Sometimes it's straight down, straight up, sometimes it's straight in, usually from one of the cardinal directions. But yeah, generally it doesn't know where to draw the line from. So it just draws it from infinity somewhere. from there, wherever that is. So, yeah. But we are going to sl um, slowly pepper our um, jump points with sensor boys. And that is going to give us warning whenever anything tries to get close or tries to come through. Now, there is another way that you can make a buoy, and that is to um, put like a cruise engine, a lower, a high efficiency cruise engine um, in the first stage and the buoy as the second stage. That way it stops your ship having to um, go around to each point and drop it in person. Um, and of course, that is also the way that you would set up surveillance buoys for uh, systems that may potentially be hostile, as you don't necessarily want your ship going uh, too close to the enemy and being detected, whereas a missile with a, say, a passive sensor is going to um, be a lot harder for the enemy to detect, especially with a very low, high efficiency, low thermal engine, uh, because then it's just, you know, um, it's going to be basically impossible to, to detect unless you drop it too close to them, you know. Um, so, like, as in, right on top of them. Um, and I will eventually show you how to make one of those once we actually find something that is that can be considered a hostile system. <clears throat> and I just realized the salamander has no way of hell of, of get, having enough fuel to doing that entire run, I think. <clears throat> How's this fuel situation? Oh, it's still got a fair amount. Sixty percent. <clears throat> uh. 
um, we'll get him to run back to earth and drop and refuel after this one. So there we go. <clears throat> yeah, it has a fair amount of range. You can easily get to the outer fringes of us of our um, systems, but yeah, it just doesn't have the range to do um, multi jump drops. Which is kind of annoying. We might have to make up a better engine for it or something like that. Uh, another auto mine on Newcastle. Hooray! Auto mines are actually very nice because they are relatively expensive installations um, that are also extremely useful because uh, they do cost 120 and duranium and corundium often. Um, well, corundium at least are one of your crunch materials. All right, there's shields done. Next on the trucking block, get us some nicer armor. Actually, I just realized we don't necessarily need this one. We will reduce that and we will increase the amount of labs for the laser. Get that out sooner. All right, Salamander is done. How are we doing? Uh, I believe he dropped on Rockhampton. Yes, good. So now... Um... Let's drop in cans next. So back out Rockhampton Way, out through Cairns, and we're going to launch here, 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 and here. No. And we're going to drop one at Sol as well. Now we're 40%. Um, boys left, or 40% ammo. Uh, so this is going to be done next year, so... Um, I think I will move another five labs into the far ultraviolet, and... Oh, that's maximum anyway. That's fine. Uh, other, other, other surveyor is uh, starting to run a little bit on the low side, which is fine.
Uh, nine abandoned maintenance facilities on Cairns A5. Yeah, I'll, I'll accept that. That's not bad. That's actually pretty reasonable for the tech, for the colony that we're digging up. Nothing that's interesting today. Uh, civilians doing their own little cycling of ships, which is fine. And Mark Harrison is almost at threshold. Oh. 3125 AP nuclear thermal engines on Cairns A5. So they're going straight for the scrap. And yep, as I expected, there's a population coming in. Well, I, I'm not terribly upset because it is a, um, a two cost planet, which means that it's, it's fairly easy, relatively easy to, ter to terraform. Um, we will. Yep, thought so. Scrap those. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm not terribly upset about it, but it is just a little bit annoying, you know. Um, what else do we get? A mine. Yeah, okay, sure. Um, cool, keep going. Yeah. But yeah, I, I, I did say that the civilians will be shipping colonists over here as well. And they're probably going to be completely bogged down because... I suppose it'll help once it gets to, to um, 25 million, then I consider it as a stable colony or a source of colonists. Um, that should help it keep population down just a little bit. Alright, there's the threshold. Crew morale. Alright, so Mark Aronson... We will send you home. So I'll show you how to quickly get ships back home, at least. So if we go to Earth and move to, it will automatically line up the transits back to one of your populations. So if you do show all pops, it will show you all your populations in the entire um, galaxy, um, even the ones with zero population. So you find your one and you uh, just hit to fly two, and it will... Um, automatically set up the jumps. Comes in handy, especially when you have very large systems and you need to get to a specific colony quick. Um, unfortunately, it doesn't work for um, non-populations. So, um, yeah, like you, you, you can't go to a contact and it'll automatically pass to it. So, yeah. Oh, well, um, oh, and we also need to overhaul as well. There we go. Actually, better idea. Where are you? Right, I don't have fleet base yet. Damn it. Okay, just overhaul then. Speaking of which, how far off is fleet base? Point thirty-five, May next year. Okay. I'm okay with that. All right. Um, and with that, that is time. So I will put a break in the episode here. So thank you very much for watching. Um, and I'll cover some more concepts, probably do mines and stuff um, next uh, tomorrow as well. But we'll see how we go. And uh, I will see you all tomorrow. Um, do hit subscribe if you enjoyed. And thank you for watching.